Ok. Okay. Today we're going to start Tanur Rabbanan on 133. Uh, where is it? It's um, is it about 12 lines from the bottom. 123B. It's the it's the uh, two uh, the second line up from the wide lines. So we think Hashem that you have a every day. We discuss about learning Hashem the base of Migdash, learning the Lunishmas of a gold of Asper Kinyamin and the son of Ben Mitzin, and also for Shlaim of Avon David Ben Sarah. The Dali gets a role as my big supporter. Okay, so uh, the Bryce says like this: Tan Rabbanan. We're talking about now a uh, an inheritor. He's the firstborn, but specifically we're talking about he's the firstborn son of a Kohen. So he's going to be inheriting things from his father that have to do with Kuna. His father gets, as um, being a Kohen, gets certain gifts. Now he's going to be inheriting that. Just a second here. So it says like this. Um, one of the gifts of the Kayan is that the um, animal, an animal gets it that gets slaughtered, the Kayan gets the Zraya, the right arm, the Chayim, the cheek, and the Keva is the stomach. So he gets, if the father passed away and he had. Had already or coming to had coming to him. I was going to explain uh, an arm of an of an animal for our, for the front leg of an animal. That's um, that the Cohen is supposed to get. And he pat the father passed away. The son will inherit not just inherit, but he'll inherit a double portion if he's the firstborn. He'll get the chico as well. The keva is the a section of the stomach, which is used to make cheese. Actually, the, the rennet. It's used to. Uh, it's part of the animal that the that the one of the gifts to the kohenim. So the son will inherit that a double portion, but mukdashin, and also in things that are consecrated. You have to figure out how, how it's, what that's talking about. If it's consecrated. It seems like it shouldn't belong to the father either, right? It's consecrated. And he'll also inherit um, improvements. That the property ha- that the property improved after the father passed away. Now this is an opinion that's uh, very lenient. We do, we always learn not like this, right? We're going to see that this is a specific opinion. The other opinion goes goes the other way. But even um, even according to this opinion, specifically these items that he's getting, it's, that's not all improvements that are done. Okay, Kate, how does this work? Let's say the father had a cow that was either rented or it was it had there was a, some sort of partnership with it where the person will get um, a portion of the proceeds of the uh, of the improvements. He'll get half the improvements of whatever, or he just rents it out for a flat fee. Or let's say the cow was just grazing in the marsh and it uh, gave birth. Now there's another little cow, a little calf. Those improvements, those uh, that income that's coming in, the, the for, even though it came in after the father passed away, but the bachar will take uh, will take a double portion of that. But let's say the state built houses, right? On the on the property, they built apartments. But not to Kramim or they planted vineyards. Then that's already something that the orphans themselves did. The Bukhar doesn't take a double portion of that. He only takes a double portion of the inheritance, uh, not a double portion of the work or the labor that they that they put in. So it would have to come naturally. 
right? It would have to it would be something that would be coming naturally that the Bukhar, the firstborn, would take a double portion. Okay, now the Gemara is going to go back to explain what we learned, the Braisa, and we'll see who, which opinion this is. What's the case where you're telling me that the child, the firstborn, is going to get a double portion of these items? If the father has them already, then of course, look, he gets a double portion of his um, of the house, of the piano, of the of the car, of the of the boat, everything else. You say telling me he's not going to get a double portion of the cheekbone and the uh, and the, the front leg. Of course, he's going to get it. So it's what the father owned. Maybe the father didn't receive it yet because it wasn't given to the father because it doesn't belong to the father. It belongs to a, a regular Israelite that slaughtered an animal. So it says that if that's the case, then Roihu, then that's considered only potential. And we have a rule. We seem to be violating that rule now, but uh, we're not going 100% like that. We still accept the basic rule that the firstborn doesn't get the potential. He only gets what's actually in the possession of the father. Talking about the double portion. My answer is, we're talking about what's called makirikun. Makirikun is when it's a, a friend of this coin, and every time um, this person has a gift for the coin, he always gives it to him. This is the coin. It's sort of like a chazaka. So um, you see this like by Pidina uh, Ben or something. There's one major Cohen. He's the guy that gets all the, uh, you know, maybe one family or something. So here's the uh, here's the Cohen. And okay, so what happened? And we're talking about that the animal was slaughtered when the father was alive. It's just that the gifts were not handed over yet. And the Kasavar, in this opinion, holds that even though they weren't removed, the, the, the gifts that are given to the coin weren't removed, it's as if they were already removed. And as once the animal is slaughtered, those gifts were already designated. And that designation already makes it as if it's in his possession. So what we have now is a big Kiddush. We have... Um, we have things that are not in his possession. We're considering it in his possession because of uh, halachic designation of the uh, of makiri kahuna. Hello is asking. If it was conceived, if the calf was conceived um, when the after the father passed away, would that also go to the the firstborn, um, or is that considered already something that's not nat that's not naturally coming? I don't know the answer. No, no. What we were understanding here was that it was conceived while the father was alive, and then it was born afterwards. That was what we were understanding. I th I think the correct title is Kok May Hillel. What is that? Hillel, the cute questions we're going to collect and call it Kok May Hillel. <laughs> okay. They're very good questions. Meanwhile, let's start it as a Google uh, document. <laughs> 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 okay. It's good. It's a, it is a good question. Um. Okay. Now the Gemara's next point, Mukdashin. We're going to explain the next uh, phrase of the Brisa. It said things that were consecrated, that the firstborn son is going to inherit. How does he inherit things that were consecrated? Actually. Actually, didn't didn't we learn, cover this subject already in Chapter Arba or Kamisha when you buy an animal? Remember, we had those four parakim in a row when you buy something, what comes with it? One right. wasn't one of the cases a pregnant cow. Yeah, yeah. Um, remember that we had the buying uh, uh, buy a cow. If you one, of, remember we said a nursing. 
nursing meant the, with the child or it meant just nursing itself. It's a difference in a kosher animal and a non-kosher yeah. animal. We had we had discussions about this. But um Oh, that's another thing with the damages, but um, yeah, my assumption, my guess is that it's talking about when it was conceived while the father was alive, and if it would be conceived afterwards, then that would be something that was just the the um, the assignment did those improvements, the orphans made those improvements, and that that would be uh, that would be totally potential, right? That's my that's my guess. Uh, okay, so Makdash and Lav, Lav Gideon, you know, what do you mean that the son inherits from his father? Doesn't he belong to the father? Mar says, no, Bekachim Kalim. See, there's two two levels of of sacrifices. There's Kachi Kachim, and then there's Kachi Kalim. Kachi Kachim, the very holy, there's a lot of restrictions where it's eaten only in the uh, only in Azara. It's only, up one, it's only eaten for one day. Um, only eaten by the male Kohanim. The um, Kachi Kalim, uh, those restrictions are off. It's eaten in all of Yerushalayim. It's eaten by the family. Um, it's the, it is all, all the, those restrictions are off. So Kachi Kalim is more owned by the, um, by the owner or by the Kohen. It's more of their personal possession. It could become like your private possession. Now, the difference is, are you allowed to take the, um, the meat of the sacrifice and give it to a woman and say, with this, you'll be married to me. Or do we say, one second, one second, this was given to you just to eat. It's not your personal uh, item. So, um, so for Kachikachim, for sure you cannot. And Kachikalim, it's also you're also not. So what are we saying over here? You're also not allowed to do that. We had a we had a machlekes about meiser, meiser sheni. You were allowed to do this. There was a machlekes from mayor and someone else. Anyway, over here, what we have to say is that it's talking about when the animal is still alive before it's slaughtered, and it's kachi kalim, so it's under your possession. It's considered still yours until it's slaughtered. That it's a, it goes according to the opinion of Rabbi Yisaglili that says that it's owned by the uh, by the owner. The Tanya was starting to write This is not. This is. It sounds like it's talking about Miila. It's not Miila. This is talking about where someone um, commits a trespass and he denies uh, money that he owes. So uh, he has to bring a sacrifice, right? Asham Gazelas, I think. Um, so the rabbis cut him column shame mom and by them even if he denies uh, a sacrifice if his if his what he's swearing falsely he's swearing falsely he's swearing falsely about something that's cut a column that's considered similar to that's considered the same thing as if it's it's something that he owes if rabbi say clearly this is the words of rabbi say clearly which means that um that it's considered like his own, his own thing. And so if the father had a sacrifice of Kachib Kalim that wasn't slaughtered, the son, let's say a shlamim, a peace offering, the son inherits not just uh, one portion of it, but two portions of it, the first born. Firstborn son inherits two portions of it. Okay, now we go to the next case of the bride. If the father left him a cow that was rented out to someone else, or the cow was in the marsh and gave birth, the firstborn takes a double portion. The Gemara says, Hash the Mukhkaras and Muskaras Labrish, the Marika, the two kaima. If it's rented out, and we're getting the Bukhar is going to get a double portion from that, even though it's not in the possession of the father because it's been rented out. Amr Chakra, you say that the, the first point takes a double portion. Raya Ba'af Army Bai, if it was was grazing in the marsh, you have to tell me that he's going to get a double portion. Mar says, Al Kamash Malan is coming to teach us. 
It's exactly the opposite. It's coming to tell me that when it's rented out, you'll only get a double portion of that if it's similar to the way it's grazing in the marsh. Just like when it's grazing in the marsh and it gives birth, that improvement that now there's a young calf that came naturally. And also you don't have to pay for the food because it's grazing grass, right? Grass fed. Um, it's a... Uh, it's uh it's there for free. What is it? Organic. Yeah. yeah. So um also when it's rented out, it has to be that it's an improvement that comes naturally and it's and um you don't have the the um the cost of, of feeding it. Okay. You're getting the the uh, payments, rent rent payments, or the improvements of the. No, the owner of the cat, the owner. The, we have two separate cases here, right? <coughs> one is where it's rented out, and you're getting the rental fees. The other one is where it was not rented out; it was just grazing in the marsh, and it had a cat. Okay, but if it's rented out. And that has a calf that goes back to the owner. You didn't, you, know, you yeah. didn't. Uh, yeah. So we're talking about where the father is the owner, someone else is renting it, the payments are coming in, and those payments come naturally. And we say that the that the uh, firstborn gets a double portion of those payments. And he gets a double portion of the calf. Yeah. Okay. So this is not the way we were understanding this in the past. We were understanding that any all of these are considered roy. These are things that are that are not already in the possession of the owner of the father, and therefore the first one should not get a double portion. So the Gemara says, "Mani, who is the author of this brisa that has this uh, this lenient opinion for the uh, firstborn son that he gets all these uh, double portion of all of this?" We say this is Rebbe. He. This is the opinion of Rebbe. The Tani was taught in a brisa. The brisa says, "Ein b'char neitel pish nayim b'shvach sheshav for nachas l'machem misus of the The brisa says the firstborn son does not get a double portion in improvements that take place after the father passes away. That's the opinion of the Rabbanon. And Rebbe Aimer, Rebbe says Aimer ani. I say, Rebbe always says Aimer ani. I don't know why he does that. Aimer ani. Yeah, it's how we always see Rebbe saying that. Imerani. I read somewhere that it has to do with his humility. Because he was um he was like afraid to say it. <coughs> so Imerani is sort of like I would like to say. Yeah, and Rebbe comes from uh, David, and David was uh, humble. And that's like the Malchus. Malchus is, is um, which is interestingly is associated with Bittel as well. Yeah, because less Lamidarmiklam doesn't have anything on its own. It only receives from the higher. Uh, Yeah. No. When he passed away, there was no more. Like, I... No, but I think when he says Aymani is, it's not that I say Aymani is. If I if I would be able to, I would say. A little like bit like Modeani. Like Maidani. <laughs> That's a bit though. Right. Right. They said, um, remember when Rabbi Meir and Rav Nassim were uh, against Rabbi's father, Shem Ben Gamliel, so they said um, he shouldn't be really be the Nasi because he doesn't know Masech Besotzin. It says, um, um, who is able to be the Nasi? Only someone that knows everything. He can say all his praises, but he doesn't know all the praises. He can't, uh, shouldn't be the Nasi. So um, they decided to get rid of him. 
question. They said tomorrow we're going to ask some questions. And remember this tomorrow, it's the end of Sakhir. So, um, so um, the explanation for that is, is that if Rib Shimon ben Gamliel is bottled to Rib Meir, who's the Chacham, you see, then that's when Rib Shimon ben Gamliel changed the way they stand up for Rib Meir and Rib Nasim when they, when they walked in. He said, for the Nasi, you have to stand up all the way. And for Rib Meir and Rib Nasi, you stand up and sit down, you stand up in different. Uh, so if he's bottled to the Chachma, so then he's supposed to be the Nasi. If he's not bottled to Chachma, then less than the guy, then he needs to have everything. He doesn't have it. Okay. So Rebbe says, Rebbe makes a distinction of you. He says, if it's coming naturally, the, the, the property improves naturally, then that's considered, um, that's considered what, what's owned by the father. And so, therefore, the Bukhar gets a double portion. If it's improvements that the orphans needed to put effort in to improve, then that's considered Roy, and then the orphans don't get the, the, for the firstborn doesn't get the double portion. So, Rebbe is the one that would have these, these opinions here, uh, the opinions of the Brisa, that say that because these things are coming naturally, the orphans don't have to do anything. It's just rental fees or calves being born or something like that, these gifts that are coming in. So the firstborn gets a double portion. <clears throat> now it goes on. Yorshu Shtar Chayv. Someone mentioned this yesterday. This turns out to be a machlekes. Yorshu Shtar Chayv. Let's say they inherited a uh, promissory note. The father can collect money. So according to the opinion of Rebbe, the firstborn gets a double portion of that. It's considered owned by the, uh, by the father. And even though the money, the actual money is not in his possession, but the document is in his possession, and that's enough, according to Rebbe. According to the Rabbanon, um, if you look in the Rashbam, Yarshu Shtar in the middle of that Rashbam, it says, Miwa, Liba the Rabbanon, ain't The Rabbanon would argue on this. The Rabbanon would say that you, you don't get a double portion of the, of the promissory note, of the loan, of the, the repayment of the promissory note. Yatza Ale Hen This is getting interesting. Let's say someone pulls out a promissory note on the father, on the estate. The firstborn has to pay a double portion. How did we understand that? The way he, the way we, we, we could uh, explain this is that if um, it's divided up, let's say, uh, let's say there's two brothers, okay? And he owes uh, $3 to this. Uh, let's make it simple. He owes $3. So it was two brothers, means it's divided into three. So each portion has to pay that that um, $1 towards the debt that they have. Because yeah, the, the, the firstborn is going to get a double portion. So every it's like in, in proportionate to, to, to what he inherited. That's what he owes to, towards the so he's going to have to pay a double portion as well. If he's the type of guy that says, I'd rather not, um, <laughs> rather not have any uh, debts, uh, but I'm also am willing to give up the profits. So then he's allowed to do that. He can say, even though the Torah gives him this as a gift, the Torah says, you get a double portion. But he can say, I don't want a double portion. He can forgo his double portion. Can't forgo his his uh, basic portion. He's going to inherit the debt. Yeah, he's going to inherit the debt, but um, uh, for his basic portion. But for the double portion, he can forgo. The Rasha is allowed to do that. Okay. Now the Gemara goes back to explain the um, the Bryson. Yeah. Before he takes it, yeah, he can't uh, do this afterwards, right? My time I the rabbi, what's the reason for the rabbis? Why do the rabbis say that they the we're on uh, one twenty four? Why do the rabbis say that he's so limited on what uh, what double portions he can get? Amar Kra, they quote the pasuk, 
losis le pishnayim, to give him a double portion, talking about the firstborn, matana kari rachmana. It's called, it's called a gift. Ma matana dematalia, just like a gift, can only be given once it, the person has it. You can't give a gift uh, if he doesn't have it. If the father doesn't have it, he can't give it. So, the only way that the father can give this as a gift to the son, the double portion, is if he already has it. Otherwise, it's you know, the you can't give something that you don't own. Right? And Rabbi, Rabbi Aymer, Rabbi says, I'm a krab pishnayim. Rabbi says, take a look at the whole Pasuk. I get it, it has the word gift in there, but it also has the word a double portion. You have to do a comparison between his first portion of inheritance to the second portion. Just like the first portion of the inheritance, the, the son is going to inherit, even if it was not in, in, the, in the hands of the father. You have to do a comparison the, between the two portions. And the double portion as well. He's going to get it, even if it's not in his hands, even if the father doesn't uh, have it. So the basically, what's, so far, what we have is Lasse Slai is being grabbed by the rabbis to say they're, they're taking those words. It has to be a gift. The father can't give it until he owns it. And this Pishnayim, the double portion, is Rebbe's taking those words and saying, no, you have to compare both portions, just like he gets the first, uh, the, the first portion, he gets the second portion. Now the Gemara is going to say, so what does Rebbe do with Lassislai and what does the Rabbanan do with Pishnayim, right? That's what's going to... Rabbanan Nami Haksiv Pishnayim. What does the Rabbanan do with Pishnayim? It says a double portion, which means we want to compare the two. Very interesting. The Rabbanan say that the reason why it says Pishnayim is coming to teach us not that he's going to get a portion, the double portion, even if it's not in his hands. No. Coming to tell me that when he does get a double portion, we have to give it to him on one border. We don't, if there's three fields, you don't make a lottery who's going to get all three fields. You don't do three lots, three, three lots. Okay, this is right. Because it may come out that the Bukhar is going to get one on this end and one on that end. Rather, he's getting the middle one. The question is, which end he's getting? You make two lots, two lotteries. You want this end or that end? That way, he's uh, he's going to get the he's going to get the the border mm -hmm. between the fields, which is to his benefit. Oh, okay. It's getting close to your birthday. Um. My my daughter was in New York for. Uh, so over here, whenever someone is not feeling well, they say get a drink, get a drink water. It's like the heat, you know. In anyway, New York, she was at this. They said, "Are you okay?" He said, uh, I "Said yeah." I said, "Did you drink?" He says, "Yeah." And then they said, um, "He said, but maybe I should have some more. It usually makes me feel better." And then <laughs> she realized they were talking about alcohol. <laughs> she was <laughs> she was talking about what you know. Totally, there was real miscommunication. <laughs> Usually makes me feel better. <laughs> okay. So, um, <laughs> so hahu the meisle achan nesat. That's what the rabbis were saying. Rebbe Nami Yaksiv Lasisla. What does Rebbe do with the words Lasisla? It says to to give to him, which means you can only give him a gift if it's um if it's uh you can only give him a gift if he owns it already. Rabbi says that that's coming to teach me that he doesn't have to take it. It's not considered violating the Torah when he doesn't take the double portion. Now, we're missing two points over here. Where did the Rabbana know that? And where does Rabbi know that he has to get it on the same border? The Rashbam says... That um, somehow Rebbe knows it also from the comparison that it needs to be on the same border from the Pishnayim 
um, representing both things. One is that he gets it just even if it's not in the hands, if his hands yet, just like he would get that's Rebbe's opinion. And also, Rebbe would be learning from that that you also have to get it on the same border. He would get both from that comparison, both of those teachings from the same comparison. Okay. Um, I'm still missing where do the Rabbana know that you could reject it? Yeah. The Rabbana learned both from, from uh, Lasses. That's what the Rashbam said. Okay. <clears throat> Amar of Papa, of Papa says, Dikla va'alam. Let's say he had a tree, the father had a tree, but it got thicker yeah. in the um, a, a, a young palm tree. And it got thicker after he passed away. Ara, Vasik Sirtin. Let's say he had a property, but then it got fertilized because the tide came up and, uh, and washed up all of, the, uh, all of the fertilizer, right? They use fertilizer from fish. What's it called? Fish, fish meal or something. The um, Kuliyalma lately, everyone would agree the shakal. Everyone would agree that the sun gets this. These were things that can't happen naturally. Kipligi, what would they argue about the chapura vahavishuvli? If it was young grain that grew into um, fully grown, or shlufafi vahavitamri, or date flowers. That became fully that became turned into fruit. Mar Savar Shvacha de Bemela or Mar Savar Shtani. Over there, it became a different name. One says that it's totally something else. And the father never owned that. Because the name changed. Or but if it's just a tree that got thicker, then we say that that was, oh, that's the natural improvement. Everyone would agree to that. Problem is when it changes into a different item. Nat even though it naturally changes in different ways, but there still is mach like this. If the son, if the firstborn gets a double portion of that. Okay. By damages, by stolen items. By stolen items, we have this. Amar Rabba Barchana Amar Usually we have Rabba Bar Barchana Amar Rab This is Rabba Barchana. This is his father. And he says in the name of, not of Reb Yechonam, but he says in the name of Reb Chia. He is Rebbe's student. He says, Asa Kedivri Rebbe Asa. We have a machlekes here, Rebbe, in the, in the Rabbanon, in the Chachamim. Yeah, Rebbe is Rebbe Yudan Asa. And so he says that if you pass like Rebbe, the Dayan, they come in for the Yerusha, and the Dayan says, okay, you get a double portion, because uh, this was, there was a loan. A promissory note, the guy just paid it up. He, the first point gets a double portion of that. It was $3, remember? He gets two of them. So, uh, Asa, that's good. That's a good psak. The Dayan doesn't have to step in and pay up the, the mistake that he made. Asa, Kedivri uh, Chachamim. If he passes like the Chacham, he says, no, we're going to divide each of you. We're only going to get a dollar fifty on this uh, promissory note. Asa, that's also good. Now, Masaf Kale, it's because Rabchia had a doubt. That little yud in there makes a big difference. Chaveroi or chaverov. Is the halacha like Rebbe when he argues against an individual? Or is halacha like Rebbe when he argues against an individual or a, or a majority? We know the halacha is like Rebbe in, a, in the arguments. Halacha Rebbe, mechaveroi. When he argues against one or any other person, that's me. You know he always wins. One against one, Rebbe wins. The question is, what if it's one against two? Does Rebbe also win? So there's a doubt over here. Because of that doubt, however, the Dayan Paskin is going to be accepted. We're not going to say that you made a mistake in a Mishnah where you need to go back. The Dayan himself has to retract. And if there was a loss, the Dayan would have to pay it. Okay. Rav Nachman, Rav. Rav Nachman says the name of Rav. Nachman was usually a student of Shmuel, but he also learned by Rav. And it says, Amar Nachman, Amar Rav, also lost his Kedivri Rebbe. Prohibited. You can't pass him like Rebbe. You have to give, on that promissory note, each one gets a dollar fifty. You don't give a double portion to the firstborn. He says, Allah is like Rebbe, only if he's arguing in, with an individual. But not if he's arguing with the majority. It's a very important Gemara here. 
this is uh, affects the way we understand every machlekes Rebbe, like how we how would we paskin when you learn Shulchan Aruch, and you see this machlekes the Rambam and the Rosh and the, this and the, you know all of this, it's based on that. That machlekes is based on the rules of of how the Gemara works. I mean, the 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 background to all of this is the, is these rules. Yeah. It's really no more than an observation, isn't it? I mean, it's like, for example, we say in matters of uh, DNA Mamano, Shmuel always wins, but right. it's not that's not a hundred percent correct. Yeah, it's and really just an to... observation about how the Gomorrah comes out. Um, I wouldn't say observation. I would say it's more stronger than that. But I would say that when you have, let's say, that's a good example. You have something that's Dini Mamanus. Um, but it also involves something ritual. I don't know, Pidina um, uh, Ben or something. Was he chayev or not in Pidina Ben? Let's say there would be a machlekes rab and shmuel. Well, it, it 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 pertains to dini mamanus, but it also has a ritual aspect to it. So how would I view that case? So maybe there could be a machlekes there in the rishonim. Do I view it like a dini mamanus case, or do I view it like a uh, uh, iser, which would be like rash? So then, yeah, then then it, the observations come into it, but the, the rules are there, and then the question is. Uh, Remember, we had a machlekes recently. Um, whenever the, we always pass him like Rabba when he argues with Rabbi Yosef, we only pass him like Rabbi Yosef in three things, right? Sada inyan emechza, Allah like Rabbi. And he said, "But was that is that only in Baba Basra or is that in all of Shas?" So that could be a machlekes with Rishonim with uh, with argue. Okay. <clears throat> what do we say, Rabbanan? It means like every single rabbi except for Rabbi Udonasi, or what exactly does Rabbanan mean? Uh, the way they taught us in school was that in the yeshiva at that time, it was the, his friends, and uh, whoever was there is the Rabbanan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't know exactly who it is, but we know that it's more than one. Uh, it, was, it was the rest of the group. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> so when it says it comes out this way, it's saying that the people who made the final decision about halacha before the Gomorrah was written, that this is the way they, they came out. Yeah. Yeah, in the Mishnayas, we have rules of Huta Paschali. Yeah. And... I think I would. Uh, I think we could assume that the way Rebbe put it in was based on those. Rebbe had those rules. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what Rebbe was doing, like using those yeah. rules. Uh -huh. Rebbe had a choice to say, uh, "Does it is this uh, Reb Meir or is, or is this Stam?" If he says it's Reb Meir, then it's not the Alacha. If he says it's Stam, then it is the Alacha. So Rebbe was using those rules when he was Stam mm -hmm. Bafikach Machlekes. Rebbe was using those rules where to put the Stam, where to put the Machlekes. And to mm -hmm. set up the halacha. Then in the Gemara, we have also these rules. We have that, uh, uh, you know, who we paskin like when Mishnayas and different things and and Brises and Amirayim mm -hmm. and all of that. Okay. Uh, Rav Nachman says, Name of Rav, also last Divir Rebbe. He argues. He says, No. He says, Well, not the argues because the other one didn't know. Rav Chia didn't know. But uh, Rav Nachman, or apparently Rav, does know. He says that Allah is only like Rabbi when he when he's uh, argues with one individual, one against one, not one against two. Nachman Didei Amar, Nachman himself says, "What's the last is Kedivir Rabbi? The opposite." Kasavar Allah is Rabbi Mechaver Rabbi Afil Mechaver Rabbi. Allah is like Rabbi even even one against two. Amar Rava, also last is Kedivir Rabbi. You're not allowed to rule like Rabbi. But if you did, it's it's done. Kasavar Matin Itmar. Um, how do they translate Matin? Matin means like to lean. He was stated we inclined towards. We inclined towards. We inclined towards the Chachamin. Okay. <clears throat> means we don't go back on it if we if we didn't do it like that. Tani Rav Nachman b'shar sifrei debe Rav. 
Rav Nachman taught in the other books of Rav. Now, the other books of Rav would be the Sifri. There's the Sifra, which is um, the book, Sifra, uh, an Aleph at the end is a Hey at the beginning, an Aleph in the Aramaic is a Hey, a definite article. The book is Vayikra, and Sifrei, or Sifri, is Bamidbar and Dvarim. So in the other books of Rav, in uh, the Sifrei, which is, remember, we, we had this, we had Stam Sifra was Rabbi Yehuda. Mm -hmm. Stam Sifrei <coughs> is the Rashbi, the Trimba Yechai. Stam Teisefta was Rabbi Nechemia. Stam Mechilta was Rabbi Shmuel. And all of them went along with, uh, Stam Mishnah is Rabbi Meir. And all of them follow Rabbi Akiva. All of this is Rabbi Akiva's teaching. Uh, it's, the Pasuk says like this, B'chol HaShayi Matzilai. I'm talking about the firstborn double portion inheritance. Everything that's found by the father, coming to exclude if the father didn't have it yet, because it came the in the the orphans, it did the improvements. But if not the orphans did the improvement, it was improved automatically. Chuckle, then he takes it. Umani, and who says that? Rebbe, that's the opinion of Rebbe. That would be Reb Nachman. Explaining why he paskins like Rebbe. Pani Rami Barchama Bashar Sifra the Bay Sifre the Bayra. Rami Barchama taught uh, from his version of the Sifri. Everything that's found by the father, even if it was improved naturally after the father passed away. And for sure, if it was something that the inheritors improved. They built houses from it. For sure, that would actually made the improvements. For sure, the first point does not take it. It's excluding it. Umani, and who, which opinion would that be? Rabbanon, that would be the opinion of the Rabbanon. Am Rabbi Yudam or Shmuel, we just says the name of Shmuel, Ein Bechar Neitel Pishnayim Bemilva. First point doesn't take a double portion in a loan. Now, is this a Milva Bishtar? So that's what it seems. We learned before that this was a machlekes, Rebbe and the Rabbanon. Laman, who does this go like? Ilay Mala Rabbanon. Do we say this is following the opinion of the Rabbanon? So, Hashta Shvachad Yisabrishu say, even if the improvement is already there, Amir Rabbanon Leishakel, we say that he doesn't take it. Milva Mibai. If there's a loan, you think he's going to take it? For sure, you don't get it. El Rebbe, it must be Rebbe's opinion. In other words, th this just went against what we were, we were, we're looking for a chiddush. And because we're looking for a chiddush, we're not going to say what's obvious. Obviously, it would be the opinion of the Rabbana. But if it's the opinion of the Rabbana, why does he need to say it? So, El Rebbe, it must be according to Rebbe. Problem is, according to Rebbe, he doesn't hold like that. But we have another b'risa that says, that if there's a, a document, a promissory note, the firstborn does get a double portion, whether it's from the interest or from the loan itself. Mani, which opinion would that be? Lay Rebbe, lay Rabbanan. It's not going to be Rebbe and not the Rabbanan. Because Rebbe says you don't get, and the Rabbanan for sure said you don't get. Where it says Laylam Rabbanan. The Eina Bechar Naitl Pishnaim B'Milva, that statement from Shmuel, would be the opinion of the Rabbanan. But it's necessary to say it. Because Salkadai Chamina Milva Kiman did not get started command the Gavya Dami. I could have thought since you have the document, it's as if you already collected it, because the document should be good enough. Mashmalan, it's not considered like you collected it. Okay, let me leave that over here by the shelf of Misam, right over there. That's where we'll stop. Okay. Shukayach, everyone. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you.